Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth his fruit in its seasons, season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for being here, Lord God, for being used as a servant of yours, Lord God. May your anointing fall, anointing fall fresh and anew upon me, Lord. And may your anointing flow, Lord God, to the congregation that they be able to receive what you have given to me that they will receive, Lord. May I decrease and you increase, Lord. You know the hearts of the people, Lord. May I only say the things that you would have me to say. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. My theme this morning is life's two roads. The life of the faithful person is contrasted with the life of the faithless person. And my subtitle is Walking with God on a Daily Basis. My introduction, the writing begins his uh, psalms extolling the joys of obeying God and refusing to listen who, to those who discredit or ridicule him. Our friends and associates can have a profound influence on us, often in a very subtle way. If we insist on friendship with those who mock what God considers important, we might sin by becoming indifferent to God's will. This attitude is the same as mocking. Do your friends build up your faith or do they tear it down? True friends should help, not hinder you to draw closer to God. True friends should help and not hinder you to draw closer to God. They should be there for you. Amen. Praise God. The Lord said in his word, he'd never leave us or forsake us. No matter what we're going through, what circumstances or situations we're encountering, praise God. God is with us. Amen. Praise God. I heard on the radio coming in, the, the young man, the pastor, uh, he pastors a church in D.C., and he was talking about uh, if the Lord had came back on uh, when the earthquake Friday, happened Friday. on Friday, which you have been ready. And so that's something, that's a question that all of us need to ask ourselves. Although in law, yes. Pastor and I, we slept through it. <laughs> we didn't feel anything or hear anything. We just heard about it on the news. But would you be ready to go back with the Lord if he should come? Because he's going to come like a thief in a night. Praise God. When we're, you know, unexpectedly, when we're not expecting him, that's when he's going to come. Praise God. So that's the reason why it's so important. When I go to bed at night, we'll always last ask the Lord to forgive me of all my sins. The known and the unknown sins. Praise God. So we need to be ready at all times because uh, it looks like that the Lord is getting ready to come back. Only God the Father knows, but we must be ready. In Ephesians 5, 8, it says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Our children, as children of light, our actions should reflect our faith. Because we are to walk by faith and not by sight. In Hebrews 11 and 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. 
So we are to walk by faith, not the things that we can see or, or, or hear, but the things that we believe in. Praise God. We should live above reproach morally so that our life will reflect God's goodness to others. Jesus stressed this truth in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, 13 to, through 16. He said, you are the salt of the earth. Yes. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is good, then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. That's what the children were saying about. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Praise God. All over the world, we're to let our light shine in the marketplace, on the job, wherever we go. We're to let our light shine in our homes, praise God. We're to live the life in our homes and on our jobs as well as, as uh, in the church. So we're the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. We're to let the light of Jesus Christ. Praise God. You know, people should be able to, 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 to feel God's presence. Praise God. When we walk into the room, there should we should make a difference. Praise God in the place. Amen. Praise God in the room or wherever we are. Can you hide a city that is sitting on top of a hill? Its light at night can be seen for miles. If we live for Christ, we will glow, glow like lights, showing others what Christ is like. We hide our light by, number one, being quiet when we should speak. All right, all right. Praise God. Sometimes the Lord wants us to speak. Amen. At a time, uh, also at times he wants us to be quiet. Amen. But sometimes he wants us to speak. But we're afraid to speak. Yes, right. The Holy Spirit will let us know when to speak and when to be quiet. This morning we was talking about in Sunday school about the life of David. You know, how he sinned against God. And how he, uh, uh, you know... Uh, got uh, uh, Bathsheba pregnant. Praise God. When he should have been out on the battlefield, he was back home. Praise God. And that's when, you know, he, he, he did something that he had no business doing. Praise God. And then he killed Uriah, David's, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Bathsheba's uh, husband. And then he thought he was hiding. He was going to hide it. But nothing hidden is not going to come to the light. Everything that's hidden Sin will be revealed. I don't care what we do or what we say, it's going to come out into the open. We cannot hide our sin. Praise God. And so Nathan, praise God, the prophet, Nathan went to David and he was telling him a stir story. And David got uh, angry. You know, he was ready to, to, to do something to the person that did this. Praise God. And, 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 and uh, Nathan said, thou art the man. Thou art the man, David. You are the one that have committed sin. Praise God against God. Praise God. And said, because of that, sin will always be at the door of your house. Praise God. So when we do something, there will be consequences. Praise God. Uh, Brother Marshall said that in Sunday school. He said, when we do something, there will always be consequences. We will have to pay for our sin. So, uh, so David, sin did not ever leave the door of David's house. Praise God. And the young son died because of his sin. Praise God. And then his son Absalom tried to take over the kingdom and, and tried to kill his father David. Praise God. And so David had to suffer many things because of his sin. But Nathan, I'm sure that he was afraid. 
You know, sometimes when the Lord tells us to do something or tell us to uh, go somewhere or tell us to, to say something to somebody, we have to pray about it, don't we? 